this year. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Okay, so we talked, if you guys remember yesterday, we had a presentation about capacitors. And we said correcting power factor, why is it important to correct the power factor for 90 plus for a main reason? If you don't care about the rabbits, like we said yesterday, you have to, you will be penalized by the electrical utilities if your power factor go below 90 for a sustained amount of time. So that's why we, we need to correct them, number one. Number two, guys, also you correct the power factor, you reduce your line current, also line, line voltage drop is reduced. Uh, voltage losses, watts losses in the line is reduced. So it's a good good idea overall to improve your power factor. Typically, utilities want you to maintain 90 plus, 90 plus power factor. Okay, here's the situation. I have a, a switch here and <coughs> that feeds panel one, panel two, panel three. Panel three has two motors and each one, was one is 50 horsepower, one is 30 horsepower. So when I do correction, guys, when I do correct the power factor, there are two ways of correcting power factor. One way is correcting, number one, is correcting at the level of the offender. Like we said yesterday, right where the offenders are. The offenders, when it comes to power factor, are motors. The, the bad news in power factor, every time you walk into a building, if you want to know which one is the worst in terms of power factor, is what? Motors. Wherever you have a motor, you add a capacitor. So a lot of people, guys, a lot of... Uh, engineers specify every time you have a 15 horsepower motor or larger, you throw a capacitor here. You throw a capacitor. Sometimes 30, you throw a capacitor. Right? Can you see where? Right by the by the motor. Right by the motor. So what you do here is basically you correct the you correct the power right. You correct the the power right at the point of the offending. At the point of offending. Cool. That's method one of correcting the power factor. They call it local correction best and more expensive. Why it's the best? Because you correct it right down here. So everything here is corrected and beautiful. Um, why it's uh, the disadvantage expensive. You have multiple capacitors right now for all your motors. Method number two, guys, you can see here, ignore everything here and go right at the switch gear and correct your power factor right at the switch gear. Can you see that? Right at the switch gear. Correcting, and you have to maintain your power factor. If, if your power factor is less than 90, that's where you go and correct. So you measure your power factor. If your power factor is less than 90, right at the switch gear, you correct it. So can I get thumbs up, Chad, that there are two ways of correcting? There's one way right at the offender level. That's the most expensive one and the best one because it solved the problem right here where it exists. It doesn't allow the problem to go through the whole system, power system. The se second method, my friend, is correcting it right at the switch gear level. Less expensive, but if I correct, if I correct right at this point, guys, the, then the, the, the only one who's happy is the utility. But inside my inside my plan, the power factor could be screwed up inside my plan, right here. Right? And right at the switch, you will be corrected. At least I can't get penalized. At least I can't get penalized. So the advantage of method number one, as you can see, guys, is number two things. It will solve the problem of being penalized by the electrical utilities. And at the same time, it allows you, it solves the problem of any voltage drop or losses in your lines. Any comments, guys, any questions about these two methods that we touched on yesterday? So what's, why do people go, when we went to Boston Scientific, guys, you saw these big caps right at the top of the switch gear. That's method two, right at the top of the switch gear. That's how we put them, right? Circuit breaker, and you feed these capacitors. You feed these capacitors. Um, the nice thing about the method number, <laughs> number two is cheaper. Any comment about correcting power factor two methods, either by right at the offender level or at the switch gear. So moving on, I have four examples for you. I'm going to go take two examples about the first, the, the method two, and correct right to the switch gear, correct the power factor right to the switch gear. We have two examples. And I do have two examples for you guys right here to correct right by the, right at the motor level. Everybody's okay with this? Tighten your belt, get your coffee. It's not Monday, Adam, now. Don't tell me it's Monday. Monday was yesterday now. And it's not Friday, so it's, what is it? Tuesday. Tuesday is, uh, it's called Tuesday anyway. 
You know what Tuesday? Tuesday. If you squeak the word choose, choose day, it means in Arabic, the stupid day. I'm not kidding you. Tuesday. Saturday is good. Okay. All right. So it is. <laughs> it is Tuesday. <laughs> Got their attention now. Shall we guys go and correct? Carry my friend. Does it make sense? The correction at, at different levels. So either you you do right by the switch here, correct here, or you go correct. One for every law. Cool? Shall we go do it? Okay. So um, this will be PDF if you didn't have a chance to sketch it. Uh, so here's example number one, my friend. Exa this I want you guys to draw because we're going to do a calculation on that. Example number one. I have a switch gear. A switch gear. <laughs> they have multiple loads connected to it. And the switch gear power factor is 80%. The full load amp that I calculated is 1,000 amp, and the nominal voltage is 480. That's the rating of the switch gear we're going in. Um, so the rating of the switch gear is 100 amp, 430, and uh, the power factor is measured and sustained at 80%. What I need to do to not get penalized, Joe, is go correct to 97% power power factor. So my job is to go size a big fat capacitor, install it in the switch gear. The green stuff is the install. Install that cap, tie it to the switch gear to correct my power factor from 80% into 97%. So by doing the following, number one, size the cap. Number two, I need a conductor to tie the cap to the switch gear. Number three, I need an, a fuse to protect the cap. Number four, I need a disconnect by code to disconnect the cap. Cool? Everybody understand what, what our situation is? And oh, by the way, this is a three-phase system. This is a three-phase, um, it's a three-phase system. Three-phase. It is a three-phase system. So just for, so you don't uh, say, where, where did you say to add this three-phase? Any comments, guys? Any questions? What we're trying to do? You walk into the bottom of Dunwoody, that's where the switch gear is located. The voltage is known for 80. The switch gear is rated for 1,000 amp. And say we're pulling 1,000 amp out of it, you know. And the power factor is measured 80, and you need to correct the power factor to 97. How do you correct the power factor? We talked about this uh, chapter 11. Talk about this one. We, we add a capacitor. So your job is, based on this information given here, Go size the cap, number one. Go size the conductor that tied, that connect the cap to the switch gear. Go, go size the fuse for it and the disconnect for it. Because everything you tie to the switch gear to the power system, you have to fuse it and disconnect it, right? And on a cable, no difference. And what's fit from this switch gear could be tons of things. Any question guys about the first example? Any question, Adam, does it make sense? Shall we go do it? Aaron, my friend. We're ahead of you today, man. You're down to two cooks, or? Oh my God, man. Special, that's good. I hope you'll share with your friend Chad today. Can't have two cooks sitting in front of you without sharing here. Okay, any comments, guys? Any questions? All right, so let's go do it. The first thing I want to do, guys, is I want to go and um, measure. I want to go mid size my cap, sizing my capacitor, sizing my capacitor. So the first thing you need to do is to size your capacitor. So when you size your cap, okay, so this is. <clears throat> No. <laughs> Existing. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay, so let me just synchronize myself where I am here. Okay. Step number one, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah, two power. Gentlemen, um, in order to size the capacitor, in order to size the capacitor, in order to size the capacitor, you have to find the true power of the system. 
The true power is always the power factor multiplied by the current, the voltage, and uh, 1.73. So do you guys remember, I'm going to remind you very quick right in here with what the true power and the apparent power and all this good stuff. This is your true power. This is Kw. This is your reactive power. This is K bar. And this one is your apparent power. And this one is your K, B, and A. Remember the bar triangle? And this is the cosine Q or the cosine of that day. So the first thing you do when you want to correct the power factor is find the true power of the system. The true power of the system. Any comments, guys, about finding the true power of the system? Step number one, what do we need to do? We need to find the true power of the system. The true power of the system. The true power, 90%. Okay. So let's go ahead, guys, and find the true power of the system. I'm going to write with blue here. So true power, or maybe it needs a different color, so it, it, it's distinguished it from, let's use red here. True power equal 1.73. So I gave you the formula to find the true power. Multiply, what's the voltage, Jenny? 480. 480, thank you. What's the current? Uh, 1,000. What's the power factor? Now, which power factor? There are two power factors. Which power factor are we looking at? Remember, there were two power factors. Here's a power factor here, and here's a power factor here. Which one are you going to use? The original. The original power factor is the one that you measured. The original power factor, the 80. Not the one you're going to correct to. The original power factor, which is 0.8. Everybody knows where 80.8 came to be? Okay, so if you guys do the math on this baby, you're going to get yourself into uh, 664 kW. 664 kW. Any comments, any questions about that? That's the true power. That's a true power. This is your true power. Now, where's the true power set on this triangle, guys? Right here, the horizontal. Where's the apparent power sits the hypotenuse? And the vertical one is the reactive power. Okay, any comments, guys? Any questions? Any comments, any questions? So that's my true power. We found the true power. Okay, now I want you guys to go to page from the 80% original power factor and 90 97, this should be 97% correction factor. From the 97 percent, there is a multiplier that you go to the electrical wiring industrial page 164 and find that multiplier. If you guys go to this page 164, it's also in Dewalt. We were looking at it yesterday. Maybe that's the pages. Could be from a. Okay, so let's go to. Okay, it's actually my apology here. This this page is this page has changed over the years. So this page now is page. Let's do the page the right page, guys. Page one ninety three. One ninety oh. One ninety three. Page one ninety three. Okay, delete this. Okay. Um, so if you guys go to the electrical wiring industrial, like we, we went to the chapter 11, page 193, 193, 193, chapter 11, chapter 11, table, table 11-, uh, what is it, 11-1, cool, 11-1. All right, so everybody's there, guys? Everybody's there. So what's the original power factor? Everybody knows how to use this table? Kerry, do you have a question? Okay. Uh, electrical wiring industrial book, that book that you guys are holding, page 193, table 11-1. Everybody's there? Okay, if you look, guys, here, what's the original power factor? 80%. My original power factor is 80% right here. Everybody can see that. And I need to correct to 97 all the way across. 
What's my what's my multiplier? Anybody can confirm the multiplier? 0.499. So then from there, you're going to find that M equal 0.499. What is M? What's M? M is a multiplier. The multiplier to get you the capacitor is 0.499. Four nine nine. What they do, guys, is they do the calculation for you. They tabulate it in a table like this. And instead of doing low, more calculation to do two power triangle analysis, um, instead of doing two power triangle analysis, there's a multiplier that you can find from this table. You take this multiplier, slam it by the by the true power, and you size your capacitor. You're done. Versus do power triangle analysis, the first and the second, and come up with the KPR. Oh my God. What's that? Absolutely. That's why we're not going doing it the long way. You have a table. You have a table, and it's all. That's what the engineers do. Instead, you can do it a long way, but the table will get you the m equal 0.499, and good to go. That's why I didn't go through the method that you doing it the long way. Okay. Any question, guys, about the 0 0.499? 0 0.499. Where it came to be. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? So there are two ways of sizing the capacitor, guys. Either power triangle analysis, you take the you find the K bar, the original K bar, and you find the K bar that you need, the K bar that you need to correct to, and then subtract them from each other, and that will be the bar for your capacitor. That's a long way. The, the easiest way to correct power factor, guys, is find this multiplier. And you need to know the original power factor and the desired power factor. Get the multiplier. Find the true power, and you're going to find You're done. Look what, what's going to happen next. Any question about this? Everybody's okay with this? All right, so let's go to the next step. The next step, my friend, is find the K-bar. The K-bar. We size the capacitor with K-bar. So... Um, since we already found my multiplier is point, um, since I find my multiplier is 0.499, you go multiply this one by the cap, the size of your cap, uh, the size of your true power, which is kW, which is the kW, the true power that you calculated. If you guys want to put this one instead of k. We put it as a true power because we said it's a true power here. The TP, the true power, you multiply it by the true power. And then you end up with 331 k bar. So the cap size that you need to get you to a 97, see how easy that method, <laughs> instead of uh, doing power triangle, uh, the size of the cap that you need to get you 97 is 331 k bar. 331k bar. Any question, guys? Any questions about this? Any question about this? So we we got that one. Is that one dash twelve? Is it? Thank you. What is, what is it? Which page? 1-12. One dash. One dash Thank you. Well, that's what I was looking at, the another alternative. 1-4 dash four factor, 1-12. Dash okay, let me refer you to, if you don't want to use the book for that particular one, this one right here. Another alternative to find the same information is DeWalt. You guys write this one. Thank you. 1-12. The walk one dash twelve will get you the it gets you less, a little bit, 
shrunk, but that's the most important, that's the most common ones that you size for. Really, the ones that are in the wall is the most common. The rest of the table is just more info than you need. Okay? Everybody got that one? Thank you. I was looking for that one. Any comments, any questions, guys, about that? Comments, questions? Okay, so we got that one. We sized that. Uh, we got the capacitor now. Now, before we do anything, Darren, thank you, we need to find the standard size capacitors. So typically, guys, you go to the manufacturers and you find the standards because we don't want to go search what the standards of them. I want to give you a bunch, a bunch of places to find. Mm -hmm. So um, what I would like to do with this, I would like you guys to go to, to find the standards. So here's what we're going to do. Um, so then we're going to take, uh, this is step, so we size that one. Let's say this is step four, step number five. Step number five is find the standard. Take 331K bar. Okay, let's take it, guys, to electrical wiring industrial page. I want to take this one, electrical wiring industrial page um, 196. 196 table, table number 11 dash, dash what? Dash three. Okay, if you guys go there, could you please go to that table? When you go to that table, the first row gives you the standard size capacitors. Standard size capacitor. There's one little problem if you guys go there. One little problem. It, it, the last capacitor size that you find is what? 125. Can you guys see that? The largest in this table is 125. So what do you do? Moving forward, guys, let's do... I, use, I always use multiples of 100. Let's use multiples of 100. If it's more than what this table has, just go to the next 100. Okay, so in this, in this case, um, my next standard, I'm going to say next 100. And that will be, what's the next 100? 400. Unless you know otherwise, just for the sake of the calculation. First, go there, guys. If you can't find the standard there because it's uh, Adam, do you see it caps at 125? Do you see it, right? Uh, the first column. Then I'm way above that. So what do I need to do? Typically, just for the sake of the calculation, in a real life, guys, you're going to go to the manufacturer of, of uh, capacitor and find the next standard up. Just for the sake of the calculation now, we're just going to assume the next standard up will be up the next 100. Any question about this? Any question? Everybody got that? But for the test and everything else, Joe, I want you to go to this table first. I would like you to go to this table to check. All right. Everybody got that one? Step number five. So we have, and so we went up, right? If it's not a standard, we typically even go up. Okay. Shall we move on? Yes? Andrew, my friend? Okay, so, so now we know what the standard size of our capacitor. Since we know the standard size of the capacitor, then the next, the next guys is you guys, designers and engineers, right? We need to go size conductors. What do we do as designers and engineers? We size things, right? So we're going to go size. The first thing we need to size is capacitor feeder. Everybody knows what a cap. Cap is a capacitor. We need to find the feeder, the feeder capacitor or the brand circuit. So the first thing to do that, the first step, my friend, is to find IC. Anybody knows what an IC is? The I for the capacitors, the capacitor current. IC is the capacitor current. And that's a piece of cake. When it comes, you take the standard K divided by 1.73 multiplied by the voltage for A. Very easy. Like finding the capacitor for any power system, guys. You take the voltage, divide it. You take the power. K, this is K bar. Everybody understand this is K bar. Take the bars, not the watts, not the volt amps, the bars. Did we say bars here when we sized it? I hope we did. No, but B A R. I forgot the R. Bars. Can you guys add this? 400 K bar. K bars. Very important, the R. K bars, R, 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 
Everybody got the R? Okay, K of R's. If you write KBA on the test, you would not get as a, a, a full point for it, period. I want you to understand when we talk capacitors, we talk what? Joe? KBR. 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 Thank you. Okay, so we got that one, my friend. Uh, then, if you guys do the math on that one, I have 482. 482, right? 482 amps. Okay, then you're going to go to the next step is to multiply it by 1.35, and I'm going to tell you where the 1.35 came to be, times 482, <clears throat> and that will get you a healthy <clears throat> 65.1M. 65.1 amp, and this number here is coming from article 460.88. Uh, so if anybody's, where did you get the 135? Yesterday we talked about the 135%, guys, 135%. That's coming from article 460.88. That's the article that talks about uh, capacitors. Okay, so you have to increase the amps 35, 130, increase the amps 35% extra for safety, not 25. And then, my friends, then you take this uh, 651 divided by 2 because we're going to parallel. That gives me 320, 326 amps. And from here, not like this, from here, you take it to uh, table 310.15B16. She got married, changed her name, and that will get you two sets of two sets. Each set is three conductors, and each conductor is 400. 400 kcm. 400 kcm. So your caps will look something like this. A three phase caps, a band, and the way they and they will be tied internally, and the phases will be coming like this. This will be phase A, phase B, phase C. That's how they do the three phase bank. Three phase bank, not single phase. These three phase bank capacitors. And this cap could be 12 caps tied together in series and parallel to get you the bar. So all what you care about guys, when you buy them, you buy a box like this. Here's my box. This is my cap. You don't care about what's inside it. And you bring three phases to it. Phase A, phase B, phase C. You don't care how internally they're connected. They have fused to fuse them and a bunch of other things. That's done by manufacturers. <laughs> all what you care about is bringing the phases, the three conductors, 500 kcm and land them right inside, right in here, in the box. And done. And then, so that's your conductors. Any comments, guys? Any questions about sizing the conductor? Uh, thank you. Uh, T, H, H, N, unless you know otherwise. Thank you. Good point. Insulation. Chad told us all the time insulation, insulation. Right? T, H, H, H. Do they go to one or they go to These are not one, they're a bank. Um, they come, they come, they're a bank. Uh, when you say a bank, they are connected in parallel and series to make, they're making a star. Can you guys see they're making a star here? They are making a star. Here's phase A bank, here's phase C bank, phase A bank, phase B bank, phase C bank. They all bank together to make a three phase system. Can you connect light three phase? Can you connect these lights in a three phase system? Yes. Right? I can I can connect any light in a three phase system. Look, I don't know if you if you guys take a here's a lamp one, lamp two, lamp three, right? Here's three lamps. I'm gonna erase this. Okay. If I want to connect them in a three phase system, look at how easy that and bring three phase to them. Uh tie these ends together, a little bit more together. That's a Y and bring phase A, phase B, and phase C. You've got these lights right here above your head. One, two, three lights. They're connected in three-phase system as a Y. As long as the voltage is okay, 
that's actually these are connected this way except it's 120 across them they are not connected here they're connected right in the inside the panel when you do a multi overhead circuit so that's no no difference than this guys was this example for the the band at the switch here yep that's right for the switch here Got it. When we went to Boston, see that bank right on the top of the switch here? Did you guys see it? Anybody saw that? There was a box. I pinpointed to some of the people who were next to me. A uh, little box sitting right on the, uh, the top of the switch here. That would be the cab. The cab. Yeah. It depends upon the size, of course. Any questions about this capacitor bank? Okay, so we size the feeder. What do you think? Every time you have a feeder, you have to have a disconnect and a fuse. So let's go size the disconnect and the fuse. So the, the first thing is the fuse or the over convection device. The over convection device or the fuse, my friends. So let's go to this one. I will do cap over convection device. The same calculation, guys. You're going to take uh, 1.35, that magic number, multiplied by 482 equal. Uh, six five one amps. Um, this number, this number, guys, is coming from um, four six zero dot eight B and C S K. Anybody knows what C S K is? Chad Curley. Yeah, and Chad Curley's opinion. When you read C S K, that's opinion. Because the code, so if you guys go there, it says it has to be as low as practical. So how are we going to measure as low as practical? So the way I usually do it, I multiply by this number because the disconnect is size, not because I want to. Because you disconnect the size like this, your conductor is size like this, might as well size over convection device like this. But if it's not standard, go down though. Okay, so then you cut that one. Um, then you come over here, guys, and you take the the 651 amps, take it to non-adjustable circuit breakers to 4.6. And if it's not a standard, always go down because the code says it has to be as low as practical, like we said yesterday. And then from, um, this is 240.6, so we're gonna go, the next standard down is what? 600 amps. 600 amps. 600 amps. So do I have a problem with my conductors? My conductors were sized based on 651, and my uh, over convection device was sized based on 600. I don't have a problem with that. Any question guys about this? The last thing we're gonna do is a disconnect. Should I flip? 240.6. Cool? Let's go to the disconnect. For the disconnect, guys, no difference. The disconnect is the same thing. 1.35, that magic number, multiplied by 4K2 equals 651 amp. And then this one is coming. We have to always ind indicate that this guy is coming from 460.8C. Uh, now, this one does not have CSK next to it. Anybody knows why it doesn't have CSK next to it? Because the code exactly says that. It's not my opinion. The code says that. Um, if you go there, when you go there. And then, piece of cake, guys, then you take the 651 amp, you take it to DeWalt, page uh, 312. Remember how we did the disconnect? So and I'll get you. You go up. You go up to the next standard. And the next standard is an 800 amp. So I have uh, a fuse 600 in an 800 amp disconnect. And, and an 800 amp um, disconnect. Any comments, any questions? Should we take another example? Now that you guys are expert, I need your help with calculation in that one. And that will go fast. That's it for that one. 
Okay. Yeah, that's it for that, that example. Okay, everybody's okay with that? Cool, so we size everything for it. So what we did for this example, guys, <clears throat> go back. We basically size the cap, the feeder, the over convection device, fuse, and the disconnect. That's it. So let's go do it one more time. So it, hopefully it, it sinks in and we'll flip a different. Here's another example. Take a few seconds. I'll give you a break after that. Here's another switch gear. This switch gear is 75 amp, 4,000 amp. That's yours, your switch gear. 75% power factor. The current is for, for uh, 1,000 amp. The voltage is 480. I need somebody to help me. I did not do the calculation for this. So I need somebody to help. And 97% power factor. 97% power factor. Okay? Same three calculation. Three huh? Three phase. Yeah, everything three phase. Yeah, thank you. Uh, this one is also three phase system. Three phase system. Cool? Everybody got that? Three phase system. So what do you need to do? You need to find the cap, we need to find the conductor, and we need to find the fuse. The voltage is still 480. Questions? When you guys are done, let's go flip it. We'll go faster on that one. So we will do two examples. We'll give you a, a homework on it. And hopefully three is good. Three hits. Right? Shall we? Everybody good? Yes? No? You really want him to drink coke in the morning too? How are you? Good. That's good. Fantastic is good. Okay, let's go do that. I need somebody really to help me here. So, <clears throat> let's do the calculation, guys, for this one. Same thing, except these will be slightly different here. Um, I need to find the two power, guys, for this system. So, 1.73 times what's the voltage? 480. What's the current? 4,000. Oops. Um, 4,000. What's the power factor? 0.75. I need somebody in KVA to give me the answer. Two gentlemen to agree on that one. In KW. In, K, uh, in KW. Thank you. In KW. 2,400. 2491 KW. Second? Okay, thank you. Piece of cake. Then, the original power factor was 75%. The desired, what was the desired again? Uh, 97? 97%. <coughs> so let's go to, same thing, this one, I'm going to change this one into the right page. What was the right page for that one? Into 193, page 193, table 11-1. Uh, uh, what's M? And I'm moving past on this, M equal. I need two people to give me an M. 75 to 97. 0.631, thank you. That will be a 0.631. Here's my M. That's it. When you get your M, <clears throat> here, um, then what did we say in DeWalt 2? DeWalt, uh, was it 1? 1-12. 1-12, thank you. That will also give me the, the, the table. Yeah, it'll be a little, the multiplier will be a little different. A little, is yeah, it? They don't break it down at 90. Like oh, so they don't go up to 97. Okay, so let's get rid of that one then. It doesn't go that far. 
Yeah, let's use that. The full table is what you're looking at, guys. Okay. Shall we flip the second one? Yes? No? And I'm going fast on these because now you guys are... Uh, give you some time to write at least. Carry my friend. Does it make sense? It's the second cab. Now... Let's go do, uh, I, need, I need you guys to give me the number. What was it? Point six? Three one, three one. Three one times, can you give me the number again? The KW? One, four, ninety one. and K. And I need the answer for this one, please. 15, Equal 15, 72, KBAR, K -B -A -R, K -R. right? 15, 15, 17, one. Yep, that's 15, 72. Gotcha. Well, that much? 15, 72. Okay. So we get that one, huh? Then the next step, guys. Step number five. Is we're going to take this number. Uh, which is one five seven two. I don't think we even need to take it to electrical wiring industrial. It doesn't even close. Um, but I want you to get into that habit. Uh, page. What was the page here? One ninety. I thought one ninety five. This one. One ninety four. Table number eleven dash three. 196. 196. You got it. Thank you, bud. 196. I should have listened to, to you guys. Yeah. Table 11 3. Yep. 11 3 is good. Okay, then obviously it's way above what this table is covering anyway. So, what's the next standard? Let's assume the next standard, the next 100. So, this would be. Uh, one five seven two. Take it to next standard up is one six zero zero K bar. Shall we? Sixteen hundred K bar. Then it's going to be on the test. Yep. If it's higher than what's in the book, a hundred. Yep. Just for the sake of the calculation. Now, if you go to online and find the size of a capacitor and put it there and say, Chad, here's the capacitor I found. That's okay, great. That's actually what we do. I just want to standardize a little bit so we can do the calc. What on there is considered step four? The 1572 cable. Step four is just the answer. Yeah. The step four is a uh, good point. Step three is the calculation. Step four is just the answer. Step five is. Yeah, step, so step huh? four was the uh, answer for well, this one. Yeah. No. I thought, okay. Was there an actual step four on the last one there? No, that's what, you, that's what you get on the last one. Right. Did they do that? Did they, did they screw you guys up with the steps? Okay. Yeah. You know what? I don't think we even need a step five here. Step four will give us this stuff here. Oops. We don't need step five. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's go back. Chad, this milk is not drank here. Okay. Where, where are we here? Uh, uh, so 4,000, we got this. Right, we got this. So this is step. Can you guys do that one step four? My apologies. I don't know why I... I was thinking of something. And so this step I think four I think I was thinking of making this one the hundred step five, but it just step four is good. So the step four is just taking it to the next step. Yeah, taking it to the next step. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, then the cab. Let's go find the cab. I C. I C equal. What is it? Sixteen hundred. Right. Sixteen hundred. Divide by 1.73 times 480. What was the full load there, please? Remember, it's a K. It's going to be a big number. Aaron? I 
Then you're going to take this number multiplied by 1.35. We know why. 1927. Multiply it. Can you guys give me that one, please? Thank you, thank you, thank you. 2601. Second. 2601M. The last step is to find the cable. 2601. Divide this by. Okay, now let's divide it by 10. I want just to make it easier. Divide by 10, 10 sets. That will give me 26, 0.1 amp. Take this one to table 310.15B16 under 75 degree column, right? And that will give me what's the sets? 10 sets. Of how many conductors? Three conductors. Uh, four out. What's two sixty? Is it four out? Three hundred. Any second, guys? I need a second. I need a second. Three hundred. Okay. And because I'm a doubting Thomas. Three hundred. So that'll give me 300 K C M T H H N. Tons of wires. Cool. Shall we? That's come from Article 460. Is it always It's always 1.3. Right. Yeah. This is this number is a constant, guys. Always comes. Always comes from the code. <laughs> Any comments, guys? Shall we do the overcomputation device? Uh, Jeremy, you can uh, read the numbers for me for overcomputation device. For overcomputation device, guys, I want to see. We still going to take that twenty six hundred, right? The twenty six hundred was. 1.35 times the 19.7. Yeah, yeah. 1600. So 1.35 times, give me the number so I can write it down. 1927. 1927. Equal? 2601. 2601. 2601M. So then you're going to take uh, at 2601M, take it to 24.6. What's the next standard down? 25. 25. 25. Thank you, gentlemen. 2500. 2500. Piece of cake. Doesn't take no gimmicks, no, no, nothing. Okay. Shall we? When you guys have a chance, I want to do the disconnect, and I'm going to give you guys a break, and we're going to do motors now, size for motors, even easier. Cool, everybody. Oops, Adam. What? I'm good. Good. Okay, thank you. All right. So the same thing. We're going to repeat this one. I'm just for 1.35 times again 26. 1927. 1927, and this is a 2601 amp, right? And then the only difference, guys, is 2601 amp. I don't know if it goes, does that, the one go higher than that, the wall? Um, that's it, it goes all the way up to 1800? Okay, so what's the table again? 3 12, 3 12. Now, this is a high one. Um, um, so 2601, then most likely, guys, will will be 300, at 3000. You will have a 3000 M. If it's outside the range, uh, you don't have 20. Yeah, it will be 3000. 3000.
Okay. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Okay. Let's take five minutes break and do two more examples about motors. Yeah, and see that, but you need to know that though. Yeah, that's the when you know it. Was it the hard last year correcting it? I came up with an Excel spreadsheet. Yeah, that's why I don't. I know Gary goes through the method with you. I don't go through that one. Okay. Oh, Excuse me. I don't want my I want my pen here. Um, okay, so if you guys remember what we did, we have um, we corrected at the level of the switch gear way up, and we said that's the cheapest way of correcting at the switch gear level. Now we're going to go down to the offenders level and correct at the level of the offender. At the level of the offender. Okay, here's my situation. I have a 30, 350 horsepower motor running at 480, three phase U frame. The ones who were here yesterday, we talked about U and T frame. When we go to the table, very important. So I have um, 480, three phase U frame, 350 horsepower tied to a panel. Doesn't matter what the panel size is. And I need to correct because that boy's offender in terms of power factor. I need to add to the line side of this boy <clears throat> um, a cap size to neutralize to neutralize the impact of the vars coming out of the <clears throat> coming out of the motor. So you have vars, capacitor vars, and inductive vars basically fighting each other to neutralize each other. Right? That's what we're doing. Right at the level of the offender. Like think of the positive and negative bars and they add up to uh, neutralize each other or kill each other. In the process, I still need to size the disconnect, the fuse, and the overconfiction device and the cap size. Okay, here's what you need to do. The correction that we're going to be using, guys, coming from um, from page again, we're going to change the page. This is from from last year. We'll change that one into uh, page, it should be page 190, page 194, table, table 11-2, dash, uh, 11-2. Uh, dash dash We're going to be using for these guys, and the power factor correction is they change it correct from 94, not 9, 94 to 97. Could you please, please correct these? You don't mind me, 94, 94% to 97%. 94 to 97%. Okay, so for these, we're going to, go use, we're going to be using tables. Right from the get-go. No calculation, nothing. Could we have done the calculation, Darren, like we did? Yes. You need to find the watt of the horsepower, which is easy. How do you find a watt of a horsepower? Multiply the horsepower by what? 700, 700, 746. 746. And then that's your watt, but you need the power factor then. The original power factor, that will be on the name player. The, the one that you're going to correct to, and then you do the correction. And instead of doing this, because the kilowatt is always constant to the motor, right? For the most part, the motor is running at the, its rated horsepower. They have tables that can give you all this information from the giggle. Any question is why <clears throat> correcting at the offender level <clears throat> is even easier? You don't have to correct, you don't have to size the cap. You just go to the table and find the cap size right away. <clears throat> Any question? So do me a favor, go to page 194, will you? Page 194. Everybody's there? Should I move? Why do we care about correcting for motors? Offender number one in power factor are motors. Because they have a bad K bar, we need to counter affect it with a good K bar uh, through a cap. Okay, here you go. So I have, I have, I need the same thing. We need to adjust that one, my tables. So I have, if you guys do me a favor, go to take this info and go to 
um, electrical wiring industrial. And this will be page, page 194, table uh, 11-2. And remember, it's a U-frame. So from 350 horsepower, 480, U-frame, eight, and I'm telling you it's running at eight, the, typically they are running um, a signal speed of 1800 RPM. What did you guys come up with the size? Everybody knows the U-frame is the upper part of the table. What did you guys come up with? 60. Anybody did not know how to read this table? So you take your horse, horsepower, what was it? Uh, 350. You take the RPM, uh, 8, 1800 RPM, and you got yourself a 60 kVAR. Can you guys check, can you see that it, the RP, the kVAR goes higher as the speed goes lower? As the speed goes lower, can you guys see that? Low speed motors, they are more offenders than high speed motors. So, um, so you need more kVAR to counter affect them. Everybody can see that if you look at 350, if you run it at 3600, you need 60. 1800, which is the typical, 1800 RPM is typical. Uh, 75 for a 1200, for 975, for 72 uh, RPM get you 90, and for 600 RPM get you 95. So the the KFR needed becomes higher as you the speed of the motor goes lower. Okay, so that was 60, right? 60 KFR. From the get go, do I need no gimmicks? Nothing. You don't have to yell and yak or or make any problems. Okay, next, easy. All right, now the rest is we have just done it, guys. You're uh, you're you're gonna go. Did I do example? Let me see just for my own record here. This will example number three. We've got to get you guys example number three. Um, for cabs. All right. So now you guys are familiar with this. You take the 60k now k bar divided by 1.73 times what the voltage uh, 480. You get yourself a healthy 72 amps, and then. Um, you're going to take 1.35 multiplied by 72, that will get you 97 amps. And then the last thing, you take the 97 amps, take it to uh, table 310.15, B16 under 75 degree column, and that will get you, uh, there my friend, three conductors. If I did my math, number three, A, W, G, T, H, and another H, and another N. Done deal. See how easy that is? Piece of cake. Even Carrie's grandma can do that. Grandma's pretty cute. Any grandma can do that. Any comments, guys? Any questions? See how easy that is, Aaron? We've done it. Now you can size a cab. Let me know when we can go to the, now we have a feeder, we need a disconnect and a fuse. That's typical, fuse and disconnect for it. Um, I'm going to emphasize this one because uh, I always like to, the number, remember that number came from? I know I wrote this one. They just say 460.88, um, right? Like we did before. That's where the number is coming from. Shall we go to next? Yes, no? Oh, hold on just a second. Brian, okay. Joel, is it good? Okay, so let's go to the next, guys. The next is uh, overcome fiction device. <clears throat> my overcome fiction device, the same, I have, um, my overcome fiction device, guys, is 1.35, multiply this one by 72, that would get me 97 amps. Go down if it's not a standard. 
So, and that's where we, we went 97. Take this one to 240.6, and that will get you 90 amps, right? And we say this number is coming, interpretation of 460.8B and CSK, right? Right? We said that one. Any comment, guys, about the, the overcomplication device? The disconnect, I will go right to disconnect right away because it's the same way. Disconnect, you take uh, 1.35, that magic number, multiplied by 72, equal the same 97 amps. And then you take your 97 amps, take it to the wall, 3-12, uh, 3-12. And that will get you 100 amps, 100 amps, 3, 4, 100 amps. And where did this came from? This number, this came from 460.8C. Piece of cake. And I went fast on these because we've done it. Any comments, guys, any questions? The only different uh, uh, there is, instead of finding, doing calculation to find the KVR, you go to the table right away for motors. Any comments, guys, any questions? I have one more example for you. One more example, Darren. You're not, you're not. Ex one more, one more. It's Tuesday, it's Tuesday today. Even Zach is up and running, man. Get more coffee. That's why they have coffee, man. Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? Now, there's the second one is going to have a little trick in it. And then the rest of them are going to be the same. Then I'll give you two homeworks, guys, to do. And then we'll seal this chapter for good. That's not bad. Open a chapter, go over it, give homework, seal it, move on. Does that make sense? The back, okay. All right, okay. All right, here's example number four. <clears throat> this should be example number four, in my case. This time, this time, uh, Andrew, my friend, I have a two-way system, and I decided to uh, add a cap to correct the power factor at an offender of 200 horsepower, two-way, three-phase, T-frame. T-frame is the new frame since the 60s, I believe. Before that, they used to use U-frame, the way they build them. Okay, the RPM for this boy is also 1,800 RPM. 1,800 RPM. Uh, what's my job is to size the cap, size the feeder, size the fuse, size the disconnect, and then call it a day. Any comments, guys? Any questions about what needed? Everybody got that? The graphic? All right, let's go to the offender. So let's, uh, let me erase that one here. The table I want to erase. So we're going to go to same thing. Um, take all this information, and you're going to go to electrical wiring industrial um, table. What's the table? 11-2. 11-2. Page, let's do the page two. Page 194 or 96? 194. Okay, if you guys go there, what's the, what's the, for T-frame, what is the calculation for T-frame? What's the calculation for T-frame, gentlemen? 50? Everybody got 50? 50? 
you 200 RPM 50. So this, then you got 50 kVA k bar. 50 k bar. So the answer from this table 50 k bar. But this is the tricky one for 208%. For 28%, guys, you have to do one, uh, I mean, not 28. For 28 volt system, for 28 volt system, you have to do one more step. Only for 28 volt system, you have to do one more step. If it was 480, you're done. For 28, you have to do one more step. You have to multiply it. Can you guys look at the bottom of your table? Everybody look at the bottom of the table. It says, for maximum benefit, uh, locate at the motor. For 208 voltage system, use 33% uh, larger. Use 33% larger. Everybody saw that one? So for three, 208 volt, here's what you need to do. You need to take a 1.33 and multiply it by this 50 k V bar, and if you guys do that, you end up with 67k bar. Everybody understand that this is only for what? For 208, the same thing from table number 11-2, bottom. So that's only for D grand motors? Um, for both of them, for both of them, for both of them, only for 284. Okay, the last thing, guys, that we need to do <clears throat> is obviously find the actual size, then you're going to take 67 k var because that's not standard size. You're going to take it to, now this is the same, we're going to take it to the table that we're just looking at to find the standard. Um, take it to electrical wiring industrial table number 11 dash, dash uh, three, <clears throat> page 190 something. 196. If you take it there, the next standard is what? Anybody? Oh, you have it. Anybody? 70. What's it? 70. 70. Thank you. 7. The next standard is 70. We didn't go far away from 67. Just <clears throat> Everybody understand why we did this step? Because it's too late. <clears throat> Now the rest, my friends, is history. It's just doing the calculation. Okay, should I move on? Yes, no? Cool? Okay, the next is for the 70. Now we grab the 70. Now we're gonna go size things for the 70, my friends, which is piece of cake. So I have my 70K bar. That doesn't even look like a bar. K bar. K bar. Divide this one by 1.73 times 208. Because that's the voltage system that we're using. 195 amps is my amps. And then you start doing that magic number. 1.35. Multiply this one by 195. That will get you 263 amps. And then um, 263 amps. Take it to table 310.15 B16 under 75 degree column and that will get your three conductors number 
number 300 kc m t h and h and n any comments any questions any comments any questions i'd like to draw that so these will be the cap one cap two cap three they will be internally wired and they will be externally these are internal wiring and then you bring a box to them and then you bring phase A, and then you bring phase B, and then you bring phase C, like we did. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Two more things, and then uh, we're done. Does that make sense? Does that give you guys a big picture of our sizing capacitor for our power system? We know how to do it now. Cool? Yes, no? More or less? We care, we don't care, Chad. We'll let the engineers do and pay us half a price, right? And move on. Okay. Overcome tension device. For the overcome tension device, guys, we're going to do the same thing. Take the 1.35 multiplied by the 194, that will get me 264 amps. Then you need to take the 264 amps, take it 240.6, and next standard down is your baby, and that will be 250 amps. I need a three fuses, 250-ish. For the disconnect, 1.35 times uh, 194 equal 264 amps. Then you take the 264 amp, take it to DeWalt, 3-12, uh, and your next step is the, in my case here, uh, 400. Right? I don't think they have 300. 400. Now, now um, instead of using, and instead of using, guys, uh, uh, if we could have used a 300 circuit breaker instead of a fuse disconnect. Any comments, any questions about the disconnects and the fuses? Any comments, any questions? Uh, yes. Because it says as low as practical. And for the feeder size, up. OCPD and the disconnect. Up. Power. Always up. That's not what I was asking, but it's always times 1.35 no matter what. Absolutely. You got it? Any comments, guys? Any questions about that? Comments, questions? Let's write the homework. Let me know when you're done, uh, Brian. Brian. Okay. Okay, homework number nine, guys. Number nine. So here's what I have. I have a voltage system, voltage equal. Let's give you a 600 volt system, three phase. And the amp is uh, 1200 amp. And a power factor of um let's say 70 percent power faster cool and we need uh, my job is correct correct to of course it's correct to 90 we have let me see a big a number that we have uh so it, it matches what we have let's go to deck to 95 correct to 95 percent power factor done <coughs> now homework Number 10, I have a voltage of 208, same thing, three phase. The voltage, um, the horsepower that we're going to pick here is, let's pick a horsepower that's uh, um, 
that's unusual. Let's say 250. We did 250. No, let's let's use a small boy. 25. I have a 25 horsepower um, T frame. T frame. Uh, RPM. Let's pick an RPM that's low 600. 600 RPM. So 208, three phase, 25 horsepower, key frame, 600 RPM. What else do we need to, to know about this motor? And what's the correct, correct power factor to 94% uh, uh, to 97%? between 94 and 97, 94 to 97%. Knowing that the voltage is 2A, 3 phase, 25 horsepower, T frame, 600 RPM. Are we missing anything to do that? Okay, so that will be your homework, guys. Do it one more time, hopefully it sticks in, okay? Any comments, guys, any questions? Any comments, any questions about that? Comments, questions? The rest of the day, I, I would like to red line, starting with team one. Where's team one? Team one. And then you guys will do power layout. When you reach um, when you reach the computer room power layout, please talk to me before you start doing the racks. There is a tricky thing about the racks. Do not touch the racks in the computer room power-wise. The racks. Do all the receptacle on the walls, everything. But the racks, please don't touch them until you talk to me. The computer room racks that we're going to have there. Okay. 